Hey guys, in this video I want to continue uh, finding uh, this function for different inputs. So let's find the other function of two prime numbers. And uh, other function again is the number of elements on the interval between 1 and p times q such that element from this interval is going to be, uh, it's going to have gcd with p times q equals to 1. And you can see if I'm going to take some element x and if this x is going to be divisible by p or this element x is going to be divisible by q then my gcd is going to be bigger than 1 then from here I can get that uh, my gcd of x and p times q is going to be bigger than 1 and why are we only interested in p and q? because p and q are uh, only non-trivial factors of p times q. Why are we taking non-trivial factors? Because if you're going to take p times q itself, it's obviously going to be, GCD is going to be bigger than 1. So we just need non-trivial factors. So we know if p is divis if x divisible by p or x divisible by q, GCD is bigger than 1. For all other cases, our GCD is going to be equal to 1. So what we want to find, we actually want to find Let's name b of p as the number of elements divisible by p. And we want to find the number of elements that is divisible by p and divisible by q. So we want to find the cardinality of these two subsets. When again, b of p is a, cardinal, is a set of all numbers divisible by p. So this is b of p. And this is b of b q. And by inclusion exclusion principle, it's just cardinality of b of p plus cardinality of q minus the intersection. Why? Because by inclusion exclusion principle, if you want to find the cardinality of union, you need to find cardinality of the first one, second one, and minus the intersection. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to find what is uh, b of p and how many elements uh, in this interval divisible by p. But let's imagine some picture. So let's take element 1, 2, 3, up to p, then I will have p plus 1, up to 2p, and then my next element 2, p plus 1, etc. And, and since p prime, I can see all these elements are not divisible by p, but p divisible by p. Okay, we got one element. And again, since p is prime, any element from p plus 1 up to 2p minus 1, they are not divisible by p. But this element divisible by p. And etc. So how we can think, how I did... No, I not didn't do the video. Uh, but if you have some number n, uh, you want to find how many number are divisible by p. It means each... Uh, number p on the sequence is going to be divisible by p because we're going to start with 1 so uh, what we need to do in this case if you want to find how many elements divisible by p we just need to count how many segments of uh, how many line segments of length p I can input on the line segment of length n and you can see in this case I can input uh, three line segments. So b of p is going to be just bottom floor function. So in this case, the total amount of all elements is going to be b times q over p. An example of the floor function, so for example, if I have uh, 5 and 3, floor function in this case is going to be equals to 1. Why? Because if I have line segment of length 3 and I have line segment of length 5, I can put only one line segment on the line, uh, on the line segment with length 5, so my floor function equals to 1. And here I have floor function p of q over p. Why? Because my total length is p times q, and I'm looking how many line segments I can input with length p. And the same I'm going to do for... Uh, b of q, so b of p over q and minus my intersection okay, 
But what is my intersection D of P and D of Q? Is that number that divisible by T and divisible by Q? So it means I want to find how many line segments I can input uh, with P times Q. And then I, want, I can calculate. And for function in this case, uh, you can see these numbers are divisible. So what you can do, you can just take a wavefor function. So we'll get just p, uh, p of u over p plus p of u over q minus p of q over p of q. And here we'll get p equals q plus p minus 1. So number of elements on the interval from 1 to p, p times q that is divisible by p and divisible by q, I will have exactly q plus p minus 1. So it means for these numbers my GCD is bigger than 1. So if I want to find for which number GCD is equals to 1, I need to take the total amount of elements p times q, I need and subtract this number of elements with GCD bigger than 1. So we're going to have minus q, minus p, and plus 1. Uh, this answer is acceptable, but let's factor this, for example, let's factor q. If I'm going to factor q, I will get p minus 1. And if I'm going to factor minus sign, I will get minus uh, p minus 1. And you can see that I can factor p minus 1. And from here, we'll get p minus 1 times q minus 1. And then you can remember the formula that phi of p is equal to p minus 1 if p prime. And then you can write this as phi of p times phi of q. Or, in other words, we just discovered that phi of p times q equal p of p times phi of q. So you can see that our earlier function is a multiplicative function when p times q. So, and actually this discovery we're going to use to write phi of n as some formula made in terms of n. Thank you.